So I've got one table up now, and I'm on waiting list for the other two tables, and there we have our other two tables. So I will remove from the other wait list, and we'll just play with this table. And if you saw my bank, uh, my balance there, I'm uh, kind of busted on Flotilla. I had a bad shot take last night, so I'll be uh, rebuying uh, soon. But anyway, so on these particular tables, uh, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to try to get an immediate read on how the players are playing. Um, based on how many tables they're playing. So I look at Trawler Girl here, and he's playing a very small stake and then a somewhat high stake. So I'm going to end the fact that he is um, starting with a stack that is less than 100 big blinds at a very strange depth. If it was like 50 or 30 big blinds, I'd probably assume he might be possibly a wreck. But given that, he's almost guaranteed to be a recreational player. And for the sake of um, time and just like saying, you, saying recreational player is pretty... uh long, so I'm just going to call him a fish, even though I mean nothing derogatory by saying fish. And so the same thing with Harry Potter. His name looks kind of reggy. Let's see how many tables he's playing. He's playing definitely way too many tables to be considered a recreational player, so I'll mark him as a rec as a uh, regular, possibly. And typically my uh, colors for here, I'll, I'll address the other colors as we go on, but blue is going to be... um my re possible regular stat, and then this green is going to be my possible fish uh, color. And it looks like Rick is here is possibly going to be a fish, just based on his name. And He's playing two tables, so I'm going to mark him possibly a fish. He could definitely be a rig, though, and it's hard to say. Given the fact that he's potting every street leads me to believe he's probably not a very thinking player. Um, typically, thinking players don't pot every street, unless they're obviously a weak thinking player, but it's obviously very dependent. I know Isildur pots a lot, so... It's hard to say exactly. Uh, Fismosa Jones here is playing two tables, but his name just looks kind of riggy and looks like he's uh, full stack, so I'm going to mark him as a reg for now. Or at least try to. And so we have our first situation against I Call So What here. And um, I don't know too much about this player besides he's incredibly loose preflop from the last time, so I'm just going to play my hand in a very straightforward manner until we have more reads. That's really interesting. He checks back this flop. Um, it'd be really nice to have some stats on him. I'm just going to... Whoops. I apologize for this, I didn't have my HUD working at the time. So I'm just going to take a stab here. Um, He could definitely be check folding, and it might be better to check back here. He did decide to check fold. I am 100% going to note that. So I'm just going to note in the small blind, he steals. And then against BB. And then CF's a ace-queen. CF, ace-queen, 4 TTSPFR. And so basically what I'm going to start to think about this player, obviously very easy fold, and this is a pretty easy call here, no reason to 3-bet with bad kings. I could definitely consider folding, but against these two players, I definitely want to be playing a hand that's going to um, flop well multi-way, and that like when I do flop to set, I'm extremely happy getting in against both of them. Obviously, you know, if I flop top set, I'm always happy, but they're going to give me a lot of action just because they don't really like folding post-flop too much. In my experience, I definitely have quite a few hands at both players. And then this uh, this kind of purplish color is just a weaker, aggressive player, basically. And so it's interesting that I call so what definitely flats here, and I'm going to have to um, see what happened on that table. And so we'll kind of commentate through this hand as we wait. And so I call so what calls here really quick. I don't really think he has any 6 in his range. I don't think he would call that quick. And um, I think definitely that's interesting to be hashed and not side to value bet. So I'm going to guess he had something like an ace X that picked up more equity in the turn which he had two pair. So that's good to know that he's not turning two pair into a bluff on the river, and I'm going to note that. And then obviously very easy fold with a very uncoordinated hand. And here, even though I call so what has an incredibly wide cutoff range, this is just going to play really badly against a wide cutoff range. No reason to 3-bet there. I would be not looking to 3-bet that kind of hand against anyone, really. Um, so I'm just going to note, did not turn a 5xx on a... Five, seven, nine, eight. So basically, if he has showdown value, he's more or less not going to be turned to a bluff. And so that's really good to note for the future, where we get in spots where his range is probably going to be mostly showdown value. And so if he does bet, he's probably going to um, not have a bluff typically. It's going to be um, typically something else, just because he did not turn showdown value into a bluff there. And I don't think necessarily turning his showdown value into a bluff there would be particularly good. I'd have to look at the exact hand. So, B Hasher raises a very weak hand. Um, he is in the cutoff, so that's obviously fine. 
And then I call so what flatted a really weak hand in the big in the button. That's actually really good to know that he flatted that hand. So I'm gonna note that also.